Welcome to Study in Slovakia. This YouTube series is about Japanese swordfish. Obviously not studying in Slovakia, what it is, uh, it's a pretty good agency that will help any students who decide to come to Slovakia. If you need help with credits, uh, transferring or advice or anything in general, please make sure to check out the website studyinslovakia.sk. My name is Peter, and today I'm with my good friend Ahmed. I knew him for many, many years, and he's such a good friend of mine. At my surprise birthday party a few years back, I introduced him to a lot of my friends that he was from the country Afghanistan. And are you from Afghanistan? No. Yeah, because clearly he Still didn't get it correct. Yeah, I know. I, I yeah. couldn't believe, because the U.S. fought a lot of countries, I couldn't believe I missed it, so <laughs> I, was, I always got it wrong. But at least now I know he's from the country Iran, so no, everything Peter, is... I'm not from Iran, it's Iraq. <laughs> yeah. Let's start the show then. All right, guys, welcome back to the show Study in Slovakia. So, let's start off with you, my friend. Yeah. So, why don't you tell the audience who are you? Uh, my name is Ahmed. Uh, I was born in Iraq and moved to Sweden. I grew up in Sweden and uh, went to school and then I uh, decided to do medicine, ended up in Slovakia. Mm. Yeah. Pretty good summary of things. And that's our interview for the show today. My name is Peter. Have a good day. So with that, so I um, went from Iraq to Sweden and how did you make the decision to come from Sweden to study medicine uh, in this part of the world? Um, it's a, actually, it's a funny story that, um, you know, after I finished high school in Sweden, I, I was like most other teenagers at that time, like you didn't really know exactly what you want to do. But then um, I've always liked helping people. Like um, when I, we use, in Sweden, we used to work in summer holidays between schools. That's a very common thing. And, and I noticed that all the jobs that I chose subconsciously was always related with like helping people. I, was, I worked um, with the elderly houses, like, uh, mm -hmm. taking care of old people. Um, I've actually worked in, um, like there are these, uh, some festivals that the government um, arrange for people and, and my job was always to like, the simple job just to find seats and just make, make mm. sure that everybody's feeling good. And then when I graduated, I didn't really know what to do. But then um, I had a friend of mine um, that once just brought it up. And then he said, why don't we study abroad? Like, mm. Go and try something else. And we didn't realize that we actually have a program, a government program that we, we get support. We get financial support to study abroad. So there we go. And the Eastern Europe is something different. It's, weather is much better than in Scandinavia. <laughs> yeah. Why not? So we started it, but yeah, it wasn't really like I, I was skeptical a lot, like starting, you know, medicine is, is, is known for it. Like, it's actually a myth that a lot of people think that me medicine is the hardest thing you study. Yeah. And like, they're always saying that medical students are always with the book. They don't have a social life or nothing, but I was scared at the beginning. But now that I have an experience of it, it's, it's really not bad. Like, it's all about planning. All right, so you were talking about the medicine wasn't exactly what you would expect. So uh, let's let's elaborate on that. So, uh, like, is medicine hard? Or? It's definitely hard. Like, but, yes. We don't want to say, like, it's a piece of cake, just come and you'll become a doctor. It's definitely hard, but I, I believe that everything else you study is hard. Mm -hmm. I don't think any, if, if you find an engineer, if you find anybody that studied another dip, an, another uh, program, I don't think they would say it was easy. Mm -hmm. I believe that I believe it's all about planning your time. Like you can definitely have a really decent um, summer, um, decent social life if you plan your days. You know, you just if you just make sure that you have these three, four hours a day to study, you should be set. How do you go about planning your day? So you study three to four hours a day. Like, do you have like a certain specific goals or you just yeah. focus time-wise? Well, that's, uh, that's the three, four hours a day that mm -hmm. I'm just giving an advice to anybody that wants to come and study <laughs> here because it's not easy. Yeah. To give, like you need this discipline. You need to make sure that you have these three, four hours. Otherwise you, yeah, you will have some hiccups on the way like it mm -hmm. happened to me. So yeah. When me I too. first arrived, yeah, it's many students don't realize that it's, it's actually easier said than done. Yeah. So when I arrived on my first day, I bought all the books and like 
put the paper. Actually, I bought like this big board on the wall and then just made a calendar. I've seen a lot of people do it that. It never worked. It never worked. <laughs> and then, um, you know, also the, when you start studying spe specifically medicine, it's a um, um, the topics that we have are mostly not really related to what we studied in high school. Yeah. So that's I believe that the mostly second year that's when the students get the shock because at, at the beginning it's still in the first semester or two I think it's still just introduction to medicine so the fact that students pass these exams in the first semester then they, they believe that yeah we can make it and then when they go to the second year then they realize that the, the topics are and actually I don't know why but you know as well like we studied that our second year was really heavy man. yeah like we'd had the entire anatomy the entire histology and we were still on the high school mentality yeah i don't really know how to plan my like it's not only about putting the time and study it's about understanding what i'm studying like the latin language and everything is so much details with anatomy i think that was the one of the toughest years that yeah you know, i think second so. year i think it's it's because of the shock that it's yeah. a big jump from high school to medicine and uh, yeah, only those that will put three, four hours to study and have a good program and discipline, they will make it. I think, uh, I think the fact that you fail a subject is actually not that bad because you failure, you will face it when we are, we are going to study and we're going to work in environments where um, failure might cost a human life, you know, so mm -hmm. rather have these failures when you're studying and not having much responsibilities, but then you know how to adapt and that's uh, that's very important and learning from these mistakes and not being arrogant and specifically do not compare yourself to other students like mm. you, you know that's um, like he passed and she passed and I don't know how they passed and I failed it just happened you know which means that they must have done something better than you, you just adapt just study just make something better <laughs> Also, you have to remember that when we, when you start medical school and you're what you're 18, between yeah. 16 and 18, yeah, and often, um, yeah, people change, and those people are usually driven by competition. Mm -hmm. I want to be better than anyone else, mm -hmm. and um, yeah. So my advice in this case is just not not to listen to people. Just get your own experiences. I've had so many people just telling me that like, if if you get that examiner, it's done. Yeah, Failed. that's it. Um, don't even try. And then I ended up getting the same examiner. It was easy. Yeah, I panicked. Like when, when I picked up the name and they told me that that guy is going to examine you, I just panicked. And then when I went to the exam, it was actually very nice. Well, people don't, like, students don't always speak the truth. And um, I think that when they fail, when, when people fail, not too many of them take the responsibility. Right? Yeah. Like there are people who fail and just say, that, yeah, I picked, I picked a question that I wasn't good at. And, but many others, they just say that like, the teacher was so bad with me. And that builds fear, yeah. fear for other students, for the lower years. Throughout the, all, all the six years, you will eventually find, go to an exam and just feel like you didn't get what you deserve. That's very normal, you know? Yeah. It, yeah. But it, just don't let it put you down. Just uh, take what happened, happened, you know? And you, as I said, you always have three chances to take an exam. Just do better and uh, don't worry about what other students say. All right, well, uh, let me ask you, uh, let me follow up on that. Over the years, how did you learn to bounce back from failure? It took me a while, like, definitely, because I, I never witnessed failure before. And, and Lucky then, man. Yeah, and then <laughs> I actually, uh, I started questioning, like, am I good enough to become a doctor? Yeah. Maybe I'm not. Uh, maybe everybody else who's working is better than me. But then I got, I got help. I, I called my family, and we have, they, I spoke to some doctors, and... And they told me, well, actually, if you don't, if you can't take responsibility for this, then, yeah, I mean, uh, you're not, you're not going to do well in the hospital later. Mm -hmm. so you just failed, take it and accept that it's your mistake, because if you don't accept it, you're not going to become better. Just accept that you make, you made a mistake, even if you did, if you feel like you did not and you felt like you should not have failed. Just take the responsibility, study better and pass. And I was told that the, even the best doctors in the world have made mistakes, have killed people, actually. Yeah. We talked about earlier, second year is a big trap year here at UPJS. Mm. Are there any other hard classes or traps 
a student should look for at this medical school? I personally believe that the hardest I've had is pharmacology. And yes. It's, um, it's not only that it's very hard to study for it, it's like you've got to memorize so many things and uh, generally in medical school we don't memorize. We have to learn pathways and learn mm -hmm. why and what happens at this and that. But in pharmacology is purely memorizing. Mm -hmm. Just names of the drugs, what they do. So it was a lot of content and in the exam, specifically here in this university, um, we get um, multiple choice questions and yeah is the, the time is the problem you get an hour you get 100 questions that's probably one of the last hard major yeah, yeah. exams yeah. besides your state exams of course. i think it's the hardest like i respect every pharmacist out there that mm -hmm. memorized everything i studied one book and um, uh, which one langs you studied lippincott oh lippincott yeah not, uh, yeah, lippincott. yeah and that that made my life hell Seriously, like it was one of the toughest books I've, I've, I've studied. I remember I saw your notebook and stuff. You were in the coffee shop. You were, yeah. you, were you basically wrote a novel in yeah. pharmacology. Yeah, drawings and uh, classifications and yeah. everything. Yeah, imagine we did it for a, a year. Mm -hmm. Pharmacists do it for five. Yeah. And yeah, it's, um, it's very tough. And, and I give them uh, props. That's going back to what we spoke about at the beginning. Like there's nothing like really easy. Mm -hmm. Medicine is hard, pharmacy is hard. And, Everything is hard, you know. Throughout your medical school career, what were some of the different medical jobs that you did? Um, at the beginning, when I wasn't really authorized to do any job, um, I went back to nursery houses, in, both in Sweden and in Norway I worked. Um, and it was a summer job, like I, I, I got paid for it, but not for, the, not for my medical career, but it's... Um, something related like at that time when you're in second start going to the third you start to also think about building a good cv when you mm -hmm. start working and uh, that's why i chose the jobs that i am able to do and that somehow relates to what i'm doing you know, I, I also got like when i explained to them that i'm studying medicine the nurses that work there also get, like they were they, i i got some experience i i learned um, quite a few things. Um, Such as at the nursery job, what did you learn? What are some of the different responsibilities? Taking blood. That's the simplest uh, and actually the most important thing that a graduate, a new graduate will know how to do. Taking blood, uh, being familiar with diseases, you know, because in an elderly house, all of them have diseases and some of them have like really interesting ones. Like I, I met these guys with the Cushing syndrome mm. and yeah, so she was explaining to me and you see them, you see how they look. Um, yeah, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. And also, I, I like doing something for people and, and getting a smile on their face and saying thank you to me. It's actually, it was more important for me than the money. Mm. So, we, yeah. so you did, I think we talked about earlier, the GP and working in the ER. What was that like? Yeah, I, the, first, the first time I went there and I, I worked an, um, at an orthopedic clinic, actually, um, because that's what I want to do later. The guys that met me there, the doctors are, uh, are very enthusiastic. They they they, they didn't they didn't want to admit that I'm a student. So they were always pushing me like, uh, yeah. So you will see that patient, and I will give you ten minutes with that patient. Come mm. up with a diagnosis. And I was like, mm. how do I come up with a diagnosis? And they just tell you, are you a doctor or not? And then I say I'm a student. They said, but we don't have students here. You have to be a doctor or not. That's amazing. Like, yeah, I get my ten minutes with the patient, and I just sit there like, uh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when, when you go... Well, what, was that, what was that like, uh, interacting live with patients like that? Um, the pa most, mostly the patients are very nice. Um, uh, they try to help you. They, when you explain that you're a student, then they uh, understand that you're nervous at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And some of the questions that I asked were, had nothing to do with their diagnosis. And they, they actually tell me uh, when I came here yeah. two weeks ago, these were the questions they asked me. You know, so uh, try to make me, to help me impress the, the doctor. Uh, um, wow. Yeah, but it didn't work at the beginning because you don't, like sometimes, uh, they, um, especially in England, like I, I actually have a funny story that... Uh, I was taking her uh, the questions related to her back pain and everything. And I told her, do, do you have anything else you want to tell me that I didn't ask? And she said, I lost a stone. Oh. I was confused. Like, what does that mean? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I know, I know what you mean now. I yes. just wrote, lost her stone. I just wrote, <laughs> she lost her stone. <laughs> and then I walked out to the nurse and I said, where is her stone? 
And she said, what stone? I said, that lady just told me she lost her stone. And she said, man, a stone is like a weight. Yeah, said, yeah, know, yeah. A kilogram or six kilograms. I don't know how much it is, but yeah, it was very funny. <laughs> like, I lost a stone. I just didn't know. I got to do so much physical examination and uh, uh, seeing x-rays, seeing MRIs and trying and interpret what I see and come up with a um, treatment plan. It was the first time that I actually felt myself as a doctor, you know, like uh, the first time that people didn't tell me do this and do that, but they were telling me, what do you think? Mm. I, was, I was included in a patient um, treatment plan. And then I think after two weeks, I, uh, I entered the operation room. Mm. That was very interesting to me. Like I, it was the first time I see, you know, it's, it was a spinal cord surgery, so they would open up the entire back of the patient and pull it apart so you see Oof. all the organs and yeah it was intense, it was, intense. It was really intense and uh, yeah i was kicked out a couple of times from the room because i wasn't prepared so oh I like thought, with like with they ask I you thought, questions yeah, i thought that i'm here i'm on the room in the room only observing and then all of a sudden this guy told me so what is this nerve and i was like and it's a nerve and then he said yeah you go out and prepare for the operation and uh, in a couple of days, we'll have the similar similar operation. So I would like to have you prepared. I went for these two years and studied like, hmm. yeah, <laughs> hmm. I studied so much for these like um, uh, scoliosis and uh, yeah. And again, the the surgeon asked me questions, but he was satisfied. And then it was an amazing experience I had. I, after I had this experience in the in the spinal cord surgery, so I thought that all doctors that graduate. Um, will have to have general knowledge about everything. I'm not going to start immediately with, uh, with orthopedics, right? So mm -hmm. I started contacting hospitals, contacting doctors, and I got placement in a, in a hospital for accidents and emergency. And I went there for, I, I believe it was two weeks. Uh, I have seen so many, so many different patients, so many different diseases, and uh, I got really good experience in uh, making a diagnosis out of nowhere like sometimes the patients are unconscious you just have to know what's wrong with them and uh, I learned that uh, a lesson that is very important is that um, do not jump into conclusion do not be, don't think that the patient is dying so I have to make my decisions in one second hmm. uh, that actually could kill a patient there is nothing that, that you will never not only as a doctor, I think as a human, you will never put into a situation where you have to make your decision in one or two seconds. There's always time to take your time. I would rather give a treatment for a patient that is appropriate rather than hurrying up and saying something that doesn't make any sense and then maybe it will backfire on the patient. That's something I learned in the accidents and emergency department because they, it's called emergency and you would expect that you need to do something immediately, but even the sickest, the most sick, the, like those people who yeah. are dying, terminal or you whatever. still have a few seconds to think up a plan. Yes, you are in a hurry, you have to do something immediately, but it doesn't mean that you see the patient and you jump into conclusions. And that actually have killed a lot of patients for um, inexperienced doctors. Hmm. Mm. Definitely food for thought on that one. Yeah, and also I, obviously I learned a lot about putting a cannula, taking blood, um, yeah, doing arterial blood gases. Uh, was a lot they taught me there. I'm very thankful for this uh, opportunity I had. Yeah. I want to ask, so what was it like your volunteer opportunity in the summer? You, you were like in a village of like 200 people or something? Yes. What was that yes. like? I went there to this GP clinic uh, that was actually a paid job. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was told that it's going to be in a city in the north of Norway. So I accepted. I went there and then I figured out that it's actually not in the city it's and the, that is a region the name of a region not a city so I worked there for what was it a month and a half I think hmm. uh, yeah got some experience again but uh, at that time I was already like I felt like I'm prepared like you know it's after this job I did it after I finished my exams you know so I was I considered myself a doctor at that time you know they were satisfied with me I was happy with the environment it's just the, the problem is that I am not used to stay in like 200 people in an entire place you know like, uh, so mostly I spent my time in the hospital in the clinic and um, afterwards I would just go on walks because the nature is amazing I showed you the yeah yeah. I, yeah the nature they have is just unreal 
and now I'm back here waiting for my papers. Uh, just get ready and um, then, uh, yeah, hopefully we'll find a place to work uh, either in Sweden or in England. So, welcome back. Uh, thank you, Amen, for this great interview. Thank uh, you for having me. Uh, well, I, I, well, thank you, because I think a lot of people with all those different experiences, yeah. uh, people who want to be doctors, I think there's a lot they'll get out of that. So, I hope we, uh, we gave a lot good advice. Yes. Yeah. No, I, I definitely really appreciate it. So, and I hope you guys appreciate that with a subscribe. So, uh, my name's Peter, and uh, once again, thank you to the website uh, studyinslovakia.sk. If you need any help with trying to study here, please check out that website and subscribe and please check out more of our episodes. My name's Peter and you guys have a great day. Take care. Oh, 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 oh,